Hi YouTube! In today's video, I'm going to tell you my five favourite catwalk collections of all time and explain why I like them. So I hope you enjoy this video. Number one, Anna Sui's Spring Summer 1994 collection. I'm going to start here in the 90s with Anna Sui, but the year before this was actually when grunge as a term, as a trend, was really created. And Anna Sui didn't invent grunge, that was more Mark Jacobs with his collection in 1993, which he did for Perry Ellis, which is where he really brought the streets and that kind of dressed down, cool, edgy, rock and roll style, that urban style onto the catwalk and made it more high end and more accessible to everyone. But yes, I was tempted to put this on my list because it is a really cool collection. He was designing this for Perry Ellis, who wanted to take their everyday brand and make it cool and make it young. Whereas Anna Sui's collection was a year into the grunge, it was already starting to become a thing, it wasn't so new yet, and she was doing this for herself, which meant that she could take a trend that was already going and make it even more so, which is why I really like this collection, is that it is completely boundless, I would say. It's just as grungy but even more fun she's just taken that concept to the next level she's taken this streetwear and made it almost something that you wouldn't wear every day but you still could like she's taken the concepts of the fabrics and the cool everyday style and then she's done kind of slightly strange slightly fun things to it it's a summer collection but she's got knitted hats and gloves that maybe you wouldn't wear in the summer but she makes it look like something you could do and something you would want to do because it fits and it works as an outfit she's really played with all of the textures there's girliness there's the typical plaid there's metallics it's sporty it's feminine it's cute it's such a mix of everything and it's her own thing she's taken that concept and done her own twist on it and yeah it's a collection that personally really aligns with my taste i like grunge i like that mix of girly and rock and roll and fun and she's done all of those things Number two, Alexander McQueen's Fall 2006 collection. This is one of the first runway collections that I had discovered, which really got me into catwalk fashion in general. At the time, I was young, I was pretty into punky, edgy fashion and clothing. I wasn't really researching catwalks because I didn't think that was something I would find there. In my head as a teenager, I was thinking catwalks equals big evening dresses and gowns and dripping of luxury. So I didn't expect to see that kind of thing on a catwalk. But then when I did, I was really blown away. I came across this particular collection when I was researching for my BTEC and I loved that it was still dark and edgy, which McQueen did amazingly, but yet it still had that fantasy high fashion feel, so it still felt like you're seeing a designer's catwalk, but a different kind of designer catwalk than you're expecting to see, but still amazing craftsmanship and style that still really blow you away. At the time I was like, wow, tartans, my favourite shades of tartans, wow, mixing that with lace, that gothic and tartan collision, love that. The movement, the drapery of the tartan, love that. The feminine shapes and figures and tailoring, which she does so well, amazing. Amazing headwear, it all felt really beautiful and really high end. But now looking back on this, I'm also seeing what's really lovely about this collection is this personalness that's been injected into it his roots, his love of his roots, how he explored them and celebrated where he comes from. It's not a silly comedic collection, it's a love letter to a place. And of course it's been executed in such a fantastic way, but this other dimension of such a personal collection I think is really beautiful as well as loving personally loving all the elements to it as well. His collections were always themed, which I do love, I love a theme but it was never in a silly way. It was just always, let's explore something. Let's see what we can take from this theme. Number three, D&G Fall 2009. This was another collection that really got me into catwalks again when I was researching, when I was doing my BTEC. This one was an unexpected one for me. 
because I didn't really know that much about high-end designers and I had ideas in my head of Dolce and Gabbana who they were and I didn't think that was cool to me as uh, someone a bit edgy and gothic I was thinking well this isn't gonna fit my vibe but what I didn't know was what I was gonna see when I caught their catwalk collections. The collection was theatrical and it was fun and it was fashiony and again it was well made and tailored like really cleverly tailored taking items from the theater and furnishings and turning those furnishings into elements of the dress was so clever to me and also so beautifully done to see things like parts of lampshades and curtain drapery and curtain fabrics and bits and pieces just crafted onto the form so beautifully and in such a fun way. That really got me into them as designers, seeing what they were going to do with shapes and tailoring, which they're so good at, and that corsetry, which they're so good at, the underwear, which they are known for, how beautifully they tailor and romanticise the female form. I really got into it and found it so pleasing as someone that enjoys drawing and playing around with shapes and how they fit on the body. I think Dolce & Gabbana do that so well and they never lose the theme again and they never lose the fun as well. This collection had such a range of beautiful bodices and really fun shapes of skirts, really fun cute round skirts and even how the collection was styled, the tights, the sky high heels, everything about it was really cool to me and still is. Even historic nods to the stage, those Shakespearean looking bodices with that roughly neckline but then not having it with a big skirt doing things like that I really love that mix of unexpected so the top half is that historic element and then on the bottom you've got jeans with it or the other way round and I think that's really cool how they're cute to size they made it's not really a word that's going to be hard to subtitle I like how they took the history and made it cute and made it feminine and made it sexy and interesting and different. I really liked that. The colours of the collection are really beautiful, wintry, romantic shades, the deep burgundies, the wines, the navies, all mixed together. Since then, Dolce & Gabbana have been favourites of mine and most of their collections, I have loved most of it for similar reasons. And going forward, they've done so many collections I love where they're just embracing their Italian roots. I think that's something I really like is when designers personally show a love for an, of an understanding of a place. And they've done so many great Italy inspired collections that were also very close to making this list but I wanted to go with that core collection that really drove me to like Dolce & Gabbana. I still stand by it being a really beautiful collection. So number four, Meadham Kirchhoff, spring, summer 2012. I discovered this collection when I was at university. I was doing my final year project. The theme was baby punk. I was trying to explore that cute and grungy mix that I love. I still hadn't landed on an art style to go with the project. I was showing my teacher a lot of drawings, but every drawing I was showing her just wasn't it for her. She showed me an illustration of this collection, which really opened up the illustration style so that I could see this is what she wanted. She wanted the looseness, she wanted the edginess, brighter, bolder, and then we found the art style through this illustration and this collection also was really my style and is very my style and she was completely right. It's me in the colours, the fun, again it's that the baby cuteness style that I love, those kind of cute shapes, fun details, the clashiness of it all and then the edgy punky style that just makes it not too sweet, takes that edge off it, makes it cool, just an ideal collection to me and I still stand by it being a collection that does sum up a taste of mine as well. Number five for 2020 Moschino. As you might know I love Jeremy Scott. What really pulls me in is fun. I love fun high-end fashion and this was a hard one to go what was a favourite collection of his for me, this one really jumped out. As I was saying maybe earlier, I like playing with history and taking those elements and how can we make it modern and still keep it and celebrate it? That 
like mix. What I really loved about this Marie Antoinette themed collection is those old style bodices, then doing interesting modern takes with it. And it's like taking that Dolce and Gabbana collection to the next level and maybe making fun of it and being more silly and more tongue in cheek than they were. And yes, they still got the jeans, but they've also these really big hips and the colors are bright and it's silly and fun but even though it's silly it still looks really good it's not just here's a historic piece how can we translate it what can we keep what can we update how can we have a bit of fun with it is it the moschino biker jacket and then we've added the big hips and it's just how can we play and take that old and that new and mix it and I love that and in particular the cake dresses yes they're really funny but I also think they work so well on the female form the way that goes on the figure just it fits perfectly the cute pastel colors the icing details you go oh actually those icing details do look really good on clothing and I would love to see that explored even further more cake inspired collections gonna now do some honorable mentions because that was very hard to get that down to a group of favorites um quickly coaches spring summer 2017 collection and their fall 2022 collections i've really getting into coach recently again for that rungy cool urbanness which i really feel like encapsulates my style and almost is kind of like that old anna Sui collection it's like a collection of pieces that i want to own the grunginess the floralness the girliness boom but this is a collection that's wearable and buyable and i want all of those pieces as well same with fall winter 2022 it was just like dresses i wanted it was just loads of dresses i wanted love those it was hard not to pull dior into this mix so just shout out to dior spring summer 2018 maria grazia Chiuri. when she went to dior i was really excited because i loved her in valentino and it is so great to see her shine and what she does with that brand this collection might have edged it for me just a little over some of the ones she's done because i love most of her collections i love how it's giving a nod to French history, but it's still kind of everyday and grungy and feminine again. The layering is super cool. I love that see-throughness and then seeing the stripes and all of her embellishment feels really high-end and really beautiful. The shapes are great. Her dresses are really pleasing. The little chokers, the long boots, the styling of it all is really chic and really French and really the brand and also really her. And I just love what she's doing. Speaking of Dior, I can't not talk about John Galliano's collections because when he was there, I really enjoyed how he designed for that brand. Designer aside, I know he's not the best person. Designer aside, the things he's made, I really love them from an artistic point of view. It had that massive theatrical, really beautifully made and thought out and designed pieces that were pretty jaw-dropping, also really romantic, also really celebrated the brand. You could see that he'd done his research. He also had that love of history and tailoring, which was so evident. And it was all really fantastical work that you would want to see from a high-end brand. It was mad, it was crazy. I saw some of his work at the Dior exhibit at the v &A, and I'm still blown away by what he had made. There are a lot of pieces of his that I just think are really cool pieces. There's a lot of recent fashion collections that I like too and do my spring summer 2023 video. You'll see me chat about the Kenzo Tartan Sailor collection that I really love. I love sailor stuff. I love that fabric tartan, the mix of the two, the play of the two, the theme, all of it. So the collection that's up there for me, you can see me talk about it more there. And in the fall winter 23-24 video that I've made, trends video, you can see that I mentioned Bora Axe's Wednesday collection that felt really cool. Again, they've got that kind of fun, whimsical fashion. It's kind of grungy, kind of girly. And the Alice in Wonderland one which is for winter 2022, is a collection that I really love as well, that really speaks to my style, that felt really cool. It's like, oh my God, I love it. And yeah, bury me. Yes, 
those are collections that I loved and this was fun and hard to research because there is so much that I liked but it was also very nice to go through have a real look at everything out there from catwalks that I've saved over the years. I had folders dating back to well early 2000s and I really do enjoy going through 90s catwalks and I love a lot of 90s catwalks. I recommend if you like catwalks to have a play and a relook with fresh older eyes because definitely my opinions have changed re-looking at some collections that in my head I'm like this is a go-to, this is a favourite and I'm like ah I've evolved. <laughs> Why was I saving this one? Why was I saving that one? Do I still like it? Do I still like the same things about it? I hope you've enjoyed this fashion-y video. Let me know in the comments what your favourite collections are of all time. I'm sure it'd be interesting to see what your style is too. Thank you for watching this video. Goodbye.